Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my review of exciting new flash unit for a variety of different camera systems. I'm actually testing it for Sony, but this is the new Godox V1. I've got the V1S designated for Sony. Now, of course, big selling point here is the fact that this is a different kind of design for a portable flash unit. Um, speed light, as Canon likes to call them, and that it has a round rather than the typical rectangular shaped head. And so today we're going to examine, you know, kind of the this different kind of approach and whether or not this is a flash unit that you should consider. Now, first of all, I'm going to give you kind of a hands-on demonstration, a look at the, the feature and the design, some of the kind of the unique aspects of this flash unit. And then we're going to uh, double back and take a look at some photos and actually evaluate the, the light itself and how it produces. And so uh, join me as we take a look at the design here. So let's take a closer look at the V1. This is an S. I wanted to, to test something for Sony since most of my uh, flash equipment in the past has actually been for uh, Canon uh, ETTL. And so I wanted to test for Sony. So of course, the headline news here is the fact that this is a round flash head. And of course, the Profoto A1 is the you know kind of chief alternative. And it runs at about three to four times more expensive than what the uh, Godox V1S does here. And, and so this runs at 259 US and that's getting it from a uh, per gear on Amazon. Um, you know, one thing I do like about getting things from per gear is that they give you, you know, kind of a little bonus key cleaning kit with everything at $259. This obviously is a really strong value when you consider that the, um, you know, the other option that has a round head like this runs you, you know, more like eight to 800 to a thousand dollars, depending on the setup. So some really unique things that are designed around this. Obviously, this is designed to create a softer light pattern, and this is something that they really highlight from Godox. Now, of course, and it certainly does, and if you look at this comparison, like I've been using these uh, MET 64 AF1. I've got several of these that I use as my main flashes that I in the past, and they, you know, part of the reason why I invested in them is they put out a massive amount of light. They're really, really powerful units. But as you can see, just using TTL, I definitely got a, and you know, just direct flash, I definitely got a softer look out of the Godox. I also, and using bounce, got a more pleasing look as well. And so um, all around, I definitely do consider that the round head does make a difference, but you know, obviously there's, there's gonna be limitations to that. It's still a very small, very powerful light source. And so it's not going to be as soft as something out of a big softbox. On that note, you can um, actually get a, an accessory kit. It's the AKR1 that fits on there. It's actually set up where there's magnetic, where things can fit on the front. So that includes things like barn doors. It's got a diffuser dome to help give you a, you know, a softer, bigger spread, um, some color filters, etc. It runs at $59, so uh, pretty reasonable when it comes to that as well. Total output here is 76 uh, watt seconds, and so it's um, you know it's, it's putting out a nice amount of light. Uh, another unique approach here is the fact that they actually have rather than you know a lot of flashes that I've used, they're using batteries you know that you're putting into there yourself. In this case, this actually comes with its own um, lithium ion battery pack, and so there's pros and cons to come to that. As you can see, it's it's pretty powerful, 2.6 um, ah. And so it puts out a, a lot of power. Um, and so your options um, for charging it is that you, it gives you a couple of different things here. Uh, for one thing, you can AC power it, you know, in terms of charging it in this little thing. However, because it's USB-C, you also have an option of being able to charge on the fly, you know, say from a power bank using a USB-C outlet. And so, I mean, you know, I, it's, it's fine for most situations. The battery pack pros to it is the fact, for one thing, I, I do find it a little bit more stable than um, using batteries for whatever reason. There, there are occasions where I have some glitchy behavior with, with batteries. I found this to be nice and stable thus far. Also positive is the fact that you, you actually get a, a lot of actual uh, shots out of it. It um, is rated at 480 uh, full power shots. And so, you know, basically I'm, I'm shooting with it for a long time before I actually find that it needs charging. And so that is a positive there. 
You've got a few other things uh, here and a port on the side. There is a USB-C port here that is for firmware updates. There's also a 2.5 millimeter uh, sync port. And so it doesn't have, you know, kind of a, you know, a traditional type sync port. It's got the 2.5 millimeter option. And so just so, you know, be aware of that, whether or not you actually need to utilize sync. Now, in terms of the physical design, um, obviously, you know, the headline thing is the round head. The other thing that is unique here is the fact that it has a wider uh, range um, when it comes to your bouncing. And so for one thing, it can actually, it actually comes down less than, you know, kind of a zero here. If you actually look at it, it actually comes down a little bit. It can tilt forward to about a minus seven degrees. And then rather than just going up to a full 90 degree bounce, you can actually go back a bit, back to 120 degrees. So it gives you a broader range of motion for where you're going to sit it for uh, bounce type situations. It also has a nice full range of rotation and, and so you can rotate it all around. In other words, you have lots of options for getting it into a position where you're going to be able to maximize the potential of your shot out of it. And so, uh, uh, you know, positive things when it comes to that. To me, uh, what I'm particularly liking about this whole setup is the fact that you have a lot of options when it comes to uh, controlling this wirelessly. Now, um, unfortunately, something not included in the flash units I've been using is any kind of built-in wireless support. I've been using these Yongnuo um, you know, triggers, including a master controller on the camera, and then these triggers to uh, remotely control. And I've used that a lot for weddings and, you know, events with in portraits with good success. What is nice here, however, is that I'm eliminating one step out of the equation. And so you have the ability to both wirelessly control other flashes. And so this uses Godox's 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless X system. And so you can control, at, use this as a master unit and you can control anything from other, you know, portable flashes to studio strobes, you can mix and match all of that. Very versatile. It can also, as you can see here, I've got it set up in slave mode to where it can be run by using, um, you know, a trigger like the X-Pro, I've got the X-Pro S here, and it really is a, a really seamless um, option. And so, um, you know, it allows me to then control this um, either in TTL, I can, you know, affect the modeling behavior um, of that. And so, you know, this does have a modeling light with 10 different degrees of control. And so you can control all of that from off of this. You can um, do control by different groups. And so you can control up to four different groups and, you um, uh, and, you know, using the, the flash itself, you can actually control a bit more by using the X-Pro S. You can set up in different groups for control. The distance is great. You can use it up to a hundred meters of distance. So you have a lot of control over that. And, uh, you know, another cool thing that you can actually do is that if you are, you're shooting, uh, let's this TCM button here, I believe is what controls it. But if you are, you know, kind of setting up a TTL shot, say for groups, and you just want to keep that really consistent, what you can actually do is you can hold that down and it will then save that as a manual setting. And so you can get the same consistent, you know, output each time. And so, um, being able to do that, I think is really fantastic. And so having that control and then not having to have a second accessory on this, just being able to control it direct into the flash unit itself, I'm finding really, really fantastic. One other physical thing that they've made a switch to here that I, uh, I think to be a, a real highlight that I'm, I'm really pleased about is the fact that instead of, now obviously, the X Pro is still the old dial, which unfortunately so was this flash unit. They have now moved towards a locking mechanism, which as you can hear, a nice firm connection. I really, really prefer that kind of setup because uh, for one thing, it's faster. It's also more secure. I have had flash units come right off before. And, uh, and so I'm um, being able to have that firm connection. Now, the other thing that I actually like, and it may seem like a, a minor thing, but I actually like the fact that you have a confirmation beep when you're shooting and when it's ready to go, um, that signifies the fact that it's already cycled and it's ready to go. 
And on that note, it, it actually has a 1.5 second recycling time. And, and so you can, you know, you can actually, you can go fast with it. It's, you know, and so I find it very, very versatile for actually shooting portraits with it. The other thing that I've noted is just, just as a kind of a separate positive is that the TTL function is actually really, really consistent. I've gotten more consistent results than what I've been accustomed to with my previous setup. And so, I mean, they get good marks for that. One final quick physical thing I want to highlight is that the carrying case has a clever function that solves a problem that I've had in the past that if you're wanting to use the foot either to screw it onto the top of a light stand because what you're then able to do is, you know, if you're controlling it remotely, you can put it in, you know, kind of any situation you want. You can lock into place with that. But having that foot stored in the back of this, I just think is a really kind of clever little design. And so it certainly adds some functionality when it comes to that. So as you can see, some really nice design elements. And of course, big deal for me, uh, what really attracted me in looking at it was the wireless nature. Um, I'm not personally a huge fan of using flash units like this on camera. Although um, first let's explore how it does do when it comes to that. I noted in the, the hands-on portion that um, it actually delivers a softer light pattern than what um, other flash units that I have used, and uh, at least in terms of portable flash without any kind of modification. And that's certainly the case here. And, and so as you can see from these comparison shots, so I think there is a combination both of the, the light spread here and then also a little bit better TTL metering that I, I find comes off of this. Now, I mean, we've got the ability to produce a big amount of light, as you can see. And, uh, and so um, it you know, puts off plenty of light, but the ability to modify that light, I think is what's really, really helpful. For one thing, uh, I find the nature of this in terms of putting it in different bounce positions, as we saw, uh, very quickly, you can produce a much more even lighting. If you have a, a ceiling, a situation where you can bounce, it's going to give you much more pleasing light, as you can see in these interior type situations where I find that both the, the light temperature um, and then also the quality of the light is actually quite good. That was true even in these shots where I was shooting some product type shots. And, uh, and so, um, you know, just trying to actually, um, you know, not overpower with light and it did a good job in those situations. Now, the one thing that I will examine as a potential downside, the coverage here is between 25, or excuse me, 28 to 105 millimeters. And it will auto zoom throughout that. So, I mean, you know, fairly standard, but for example, in the Metz units that I was using, they both have a longer uh, telephoto. They can match up to 200 millimeters. Again, part of why I went to them. But one thing that you are mi miss missing just as a basic thing is that a lot of times a flash will have a, a pop-out um, lens that you can drop down over that will help to spread the light wider. And so you don't have a built-in option for that, nor do you have an option for like a flash card built in. And so, you know, some of those things that some people may be accustomed to using, you don't have. Um, and so it kind of makes up for that with the, the broad spread that's naturally. You could put the diffuser dome on there from the accessory kit or something like that that could help you to achieve maybe something a little bit uh, more similar when it comes to that. Now, the, uh, in this next group, one of the, this is also going to be outdoor type shots. And in this case, I had the flash mounted on there with maybe just a little tilt. I, I'm never a big fan of a, a direct flash, in, or at least very, very rarely. But um, just putting a little bit of to where the lights are more skimming. I shot a series of portraits with the, the flash on camera. And uh, as you can see from these shots, I feel like the lighting is nice and natural. And, uh, and in this case, I think I shot almost exclusively with TTL and it actually did a really good job of metering for that situation. And so uh, certainly that is advantageous. Now, of course, the wireless ability to get the flash off camera is kind of one of my you know, preferred ways of approach. Now, one thing that I'll do, uh, did for this series is I actually used one of my favorite light modifiers. 
This is the, the Light Genius Super Scoop 3. It's really kind of a basic thing, but I've reviewed this before. I'll throw a link to that. But I use this all the time, uh, a lot of times for outdoor type shoots because it allows me to quickly and easily, for one thing, I can just have an assistant holding this and um, it's I don't have to worry about it blowing over. But what it does is it just kind of shapes the light um, and it's better for like in a group. And so there's, I'll give you another look at the quality of the light. And so it's kind of, um, you know, just kind of coming out in that fashion. And so you can see from these pictures, this is just some Father's Day stuff with my family, but you can see that the, the lighting once again is, is nice and even and the color balance is really quite good. Now, of course, the, and I shot those off camera, by the way, on a light stand like this, basically the setup just as you saw. And I got that kind of a little bit off to the side so the light is a little, little more flatteringly directional, but also spread out a lot. Now, of course, having the ability to put the flash unit wherever you want is really interesting, particularly, particularly if you start to mix and match light sources. And so um, in this series, what I did this is just looking at kind of a still life setup. And so I, I move the flash unit behind, kind of directing it to skim or to uh, light up to kind of illuminate the background. And then I also mixed and matched with just a tiny bit of front fill light from uh, my Roto Light EOS, um, you know, kind of fixed light source. And so just kind of give you a look at uh, all the different options you have in doing that. Similarly, in shooting just, you know, kind of a basic session with uh, my son, and you can see that I could put the flash unit behind and so I could use it as a hair light. I could use it for a little bit of slightly moody rim lighting, and then maybe it was just, you know, to augment just a little bit of front fill from another light source. But of course, you have tons of control where you place the light based on that. And so I, I see, you know, a lot of pluses there. I'm really actually really happy with the, the light source. The, my one concern that I have that I haven't been able to address yet is actually when it comes to the battery pack. If you're shooting a really extensive series and you run out of battery, it's one thing to have double A's that you feed in. It's another thing to have a proprietary battery pack. And so, so far, I'm sure it's coming. So far, I've been able to find it actually to be able to buy a second battery pack um, you know, separately. And so I'm assuming that that is coming, but to this point with it just coming to market, I haven't seen that yet. And so, you know, the only other thing that I might be able to see is that in the sheer volume of light, if you're wanting to project for a long distance, I don't know if it's as powerful as some of the other units that I've used, but for my actual real world use, um, it's actually worked really, really well. And so at this price point, I think it's a, it's a really, really interesting option if you want to experiment with a different kind of shape of light head. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you'll look in the description down below, I will throw a linkage, I'll throw up an image gallery, and so you can look at some of these photos a little bit more, you know, critically perhaps. There's also be some buying links if you'd like to purchase one uh, for yourself, and it's available for a wide range of different camera systems. And, and certainly, you know, then being able to mix and match with other, you know, particularly wirelessly other light sources, I think is a really, really cool option for that. And of course, you could use this as a master on camera and then have other lights um, off camera that you control wirelessly. A lot of functionality that's baked into it. Also, you can find linkages there to follow me on social media, uh, to sign up for my newsletter. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.